Welcome to the Caffeine Stream on Caffeine and Philosophy. Cool. So, hello everyone. Welcome to the sixth episode of the Caffeine Stream. And today I have a very special guest that is uh, Jack Donovan. Jack Donovan is most famous for The Way of Men, but his most recent book, Fire in the Dark, uh, came out just recently. It's been a, a tremendous success so far, I think. And it goes into some interesting subjects on the on the relationship between man and gods. And um, I think I think perhaps you can expand on this, Jack. But but goes t- picks up where uh, a more complete beast sort of left off on the importance of the the creative aspect of man. Is that correct? Yeah, I would say. I mean, there's a, definitely a natural flow. Um, just the way, the way my thought has gone over the years and just to expand on things. I mean, uh, the way of man is very much, yeah, it's one oh one stuff. Let's say it. it's like, this is what a man is. This is how life works. This is basic shit. Um, and then, uh, but that whole idea of this, you know, the perimeter that comes from the way of men, uh, really, I think fire in the dark bookends it really well in the sense of it goes back to the campfire and that all, all that and then talks about it in a spiritual and conceptual way mm-hmm. uh, so it's, i think it's much it, it it's a nice like beginning in 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 development uh, yeah. they, they put together well i think more than the other ones uh, the other ones about different things almost but then uh, you know like those two books kind of one finishes the other right? in, in, in a little bit yeah and in, in an almost kind of circular way because the way of the men the way of men had a a a within the gang beginning you you sort of begin by accepting the gang you're a part of and right. then with fire in the dark it goes back to the the um the lawmaker rule giver mentality of what what what's the ethos that forms that great gang and creates that gang that the gang is an emanation of sort of in in the first place yeah 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 absolutely and so i i guess the first question in in a sort of art oriented conversation is uh you know you lay out three archetypes of god or or possibly of man in relationship to god which is the 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 sky father the striker and the lord of the earth is the is the man as a creative agent or God as a creative agent, any one of those more than the other? Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe different aspects of creativity mm. um, yeah, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the father archetype, I think it was being, I mean, I, I kind of identify with father and darkness kind of concept the most um, in terms of figuring out problems. Uh, you know, that's kind of what I do, um, you know, like, you know, dealing with a world of confusion and trying to put it in order. And so that's, that's an aspect, obviously, of ordering things and you, you and uh, this kind of overarching, like putting a narrative on something. I think some of the things we were talking about earlier about art, and I'm sure we'll go back to and whatever, um, you know, like your stamp on it. You know, putting your stamp on it, putting your, uh, you know, like, what is this? You know, you know, what is this? I mean, that's half of what you learn in art school. I mean, I went, I went to art school and, and uh, you know, like the game of modern art to a certain extent is, is uh, or conceptual art because modern art is such a big category. People are like, modern, I don't like modern art. It's like, they're like, that's <laughs> right. you, you don't like modernism because that's an ideal and then the, the, there's all kinds of other stuff uh they, they're like i don't like new things uh, is basically what they're saying but um yeah in conceptual art a lot of it is is like half of it is the story uh there's this great piece um you know very famous damien hurst uh it's called it always it's such a striking image to me that i've gone back to it for years and years and years it's it's a dead shark in a tank, hmm. and that's all it is. It's a dead shark in a glass tank, and uh, you know obviously it's been like embalmed or I don't know exactly how they handled it. But it's, so, it's always the same. So it's an actual shark. Yes, that's yes, been dead, preserved in some way. Yeah, like okay. in a tank, and it's it's called the physical impossibility of death in the mind of the living. And 
it's such a cool image. You're like that's the game of concept. Like, what like is the title is half the work there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, yeah, exactly. That's it. it's like, but the title with the image. Yeah. Wow. And All and, right. and, and, and that's like when people say they don't understand my, I'm like, that's a really cool thing. You know, yeah. no, it isn't like I painted a pretty picture, but it is you you've said something and right. then i think you know like that's kind of more like the father role that we're kind of talking about is like you're adding a narrative you're like saying this is what this is and uh you know it, it, you know curating it that in that way creating the concept of it and, and uh and that's i think what a father role comes in and then um uh, you know there's that apollonian dionysian um balance that you have to have to make art uh, yeah. Someone actually on Twitter responded to something I said about this, and uh, they're like, "You art all comes from the Dionysian," and I was like, "Incorrect." <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that is not the point. You're wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. Wrong according to the man who corn, coined the dyad. Yeah, I guess, but I mean, because I mean, he, I mean, he was he wasn't talking in my frame. Obviously, he was just talking right. generally, and uh, he. Uh, he basically like yeah the Dionysian yeah that's that's the kind of like ecstasy and and uh, this you know connection to the earth and whatever it's that you have to tap into thing, thing creative. Yeah. But yeah. if you don't order it, it's a mess. You know, at best it'd be a Jackson Pollock. You know, like right. at best. <laughs> you know, but really, it's it's just a disordered mess until you like give it structure. Um, you know, like it, it, you know. People like to think that, you know, the best art doesn't have any limitations, but limitations actually create art to the extent of like, okay, an 18 by 24 canvas, I can figure out what to do with that a lot better than an infinite amount of space. <laughs> you know, right. like, okay, I don't know what to do with that, but like 18 by 24, okay, we fill it. Here's the, you know, the rule of thirds, you know, golden ratio, like <laughs> we'll figure some stuff out. But uh, fill the, a third of infinity with yeah <laughs> yeah 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 like you can't what are you gonna do with it so uh you you need some kind of limitations you need order you need structure uh so that's the about the the apollonian side of of uh creativity is you know like this this more ordered like reasoned uh, you know like you, let's make it make sense so let's make it figure it figure it out and then uh you know but you have to pull from that kind of earthy lord of the earth realm uh that yeah we you know like there's love and lust and, and uh, you know, beauty and, and all these things that are magical about being human. And, uh, and that's where that all comes. So you need both of them. Like, and that's, you know, they're great, uh, uh, great uh, quote by Nietzsche, you know, like one must have chaos in one to give birth to a dancing star. Yes. And, and that's, you know, that's one of my favorites. And uh, cause it's true. <laughs> For anyone who is, who is listening to this, who's hanging on by a thread on this whole Dionysian versus Apollonian thing. Yeah. Th those terms come from Nietzsche's birth of tragedy, which was his explanation of where Greek tragedy came from, why it was such a great art form, and how it balanced these two elements, the Dionysian and the Apollonian, which he outlines to create the highest possible form of art, in his opinion. Yeah, yeah. and I actually came to that uh, not by Nietzsche. I mean, you know, he, that's where it comes from. But uh, I, I actually came to that through Camille Paglia. Mm. Uh, cause she wrote in sexual persona, which is like a book that I tried to read, like in, in high school, uh, when it came out, uh, wow. but, uh, it, it, I think, I think you have to have like a PhD in literature to really, really, really get that book. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's like, like in here in William Gibson's the fairy queen, which we've all read, uh, <laughs> you know, like there's right. it, it's like that, you know, but, uh, it, it was an extensive, you know, knowledge of art history, uh, and concepts, but, um, you know, I was inter first introduced to that whole Dionysian Apollonian thing through actually Camille Pilea's writing uh, many, many years ago. So I've been using that that form for years, and I actually I have gone obviously back and read the the, the Nietzsche's version in uh, uh, Birth of Tragedy, but uh, that's that's where my entry point for that was. Yeah, well, and it seems like all great all great art, the the, the momentous works that everyone remembers. Or some breakthrough into a into a, a new genre that someone hadn't thought of before. Like Yukio Mishima came up with this new sort of hybrid genre with Son of Sun and Steel, if I remember correctly. And uh, a guy I've been exploring recently, James Joyce, was sort of dancing that balance between 
you know, respecting and upholding nation and religion and family, and at the same time rejecting it in this very strange balance balance between these two things that threw everyone off for century, <laughs> or a better part of a century, uh, in terms of understanding him and, and what he was trying to do. But such seems to be the nature of art that isn't merely, you know, sort of refinement of existing form, and which is also legitimate. My my own favorite uh, is the, the the works of Homer, which you know, most scholars seem to believe were a a not an original creation of the man, but a a you know a final tweaking and refinement of an oral tradition and an oral story that had been going on for centuries uh, in right. advance. So it's 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 kind of a both. It feels like it's a kind of a both and thing going on. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I mean, uh, it, it, that that is a lot of you know retelling old stories in a new way is right. a is a is a great theme of art. I mean, that's as I said that that I, I bring it up all the time that that comic book uh, that retells the stories of Hercules in outer, in outer space, and it has all the gritty parts of it of him killing his family and the whole deal. <laughs> like it's, I, I mean, I, I'm like that's that's what we need more of. I mean, but it's, it's, it's an old, old story, but it was told in a totally new way. And I'm like, I want to see that movie so bad. Uh, if I, if I had a million dollars, you know, well, whatever, $200 million, whatever much a movie costs now, uh, I, more would, in space. I, I would totally fund that. <laughs> that would be pretty epic. Yeah. Um, speaking of futuristic, you know, mediums and evolving uh, modes of artistic expression, there's been a um, there's been a new sort of a new emergent uh, genre of art that we've seen popping up visual art I should say mm -hmm. um, and that's with AI generated images you see you know sort of these these uh, nine square iterative forms popping up on 4chan and stuff and from from what you've been messing around with this a little bit and even using it in some of your recent essays the um, the beyond the man cave sex pollution one uses uh, supplementary AI uh, art there. Um, can you tell the, the audience a little bit about what that's all about, what, what you see in there, possibly dangers, possible opportunities. It, it seems like a whole Pandora's box of, of, uh, of uh, futures that this thing has opened up. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, uh, with without a doubt, I, I do think that all the people who thought of AI and knew how to do it should have been shot a long time ago. <laughs> like, you know, like, like that, that should never have happened. It's kind of like it's like the atomic bomb. Like you don't get to put that toothpaste back in the tube once right. you get it out. Uh, and that's where we're at. So it's like the you know I could say it's a terrible thing, and I do think it's a terrible thing but it's not going away and so then you just you're in an arms race now of like well how can i use the terrible thing because i can't make it go away uh you know i i, I think that computers thinking i mean we've all seen the sci-fi movies i don't know why like <laughs> i don't know why people are like but what if we just created skynet just to see you know you know uh you know like that's a terrible idea but um it's happening and it's it's you know i didn't make it uh so like well, well let's see what we can use it for and so i've been using the the ai mid journey um i was using one uh called the Dre disco diffusion for a little bit and then i went to mid journey which has been opening up to a lot more people and been uh uh it's a lot better and i've was i signed up for a waiting list for another beta for a different one today um it, that was it seems like it has a lot of it had a photorealistic realistic person that actually looked like a person uh oh. that someone had done with it so like i was like i was like i want that um so but what it really i think creates the opportunity for because you're still relying on the computer to do the the thing the actual rendering of the thing so you can't you can control it and give it influences but it's doing it you know, it's, it's, it's doing it and you can, you can kind of say, you can say, this is what I want uh, with all your prompts and you, it, it, but it's, it's hard to get exactly what you want. I mean, I can right. work with ideas like, like for the, 
I really like it for editorial work. I feel like a trailblazer in that respect. I don't know. I haven't seen anyone do that yet. And if there has been very new uh, to take AI to be like, well, why would I go on Adobe stock and get something, some staged photo that somebody took when I wrote an article and I know what it's about and I can say, well, what's this, what's this uh, female pollution of the art space look like? Well, it's, it's pink slime in a gallery, you know, and then I'm like pink slime in a gallery, in an art gallery. And, uh, you know, so that's very more specific than I would have gotten from, um, you know, stock photography. Right. Uh, so it, it's hard to that, capture that photo. Yeah. In that respect, it was, <laughs> it, it was superior. Uh, yeah. That's what I would get from like searching literally for hours sometimes because I've totally done it. Um, I enjoy that probably a little too much, but like going through Adobe <laughs> stock and try, trying to find the right image. But yeah, so it, it's it, it's really useful for that kind of stuff. It's useful for brainstorming and it, whatever it's doing with composition is brilliant. Um, it comes up with compositions that are correct. You know, like, oh, that's the best way that those colors should have been, you know? Right. Uh, and, and so things that I would never think of, but, you know, it has limitations in, so, so far in terms of what, level it can render especially with people and i mean the other day i was like threw my hands up and walked away from it because i could not get it to render an eagle to save my life right. um it, but uh it, so it, i think the usefulness of it i mean it, you know the point i wanted to really make about the usefulness of it is that it allows people who you know like don't have that rendering ability to think artistically um, and, you know, because, you know, I've been a tattoo artist and the worst part about being a tattoo artist, you really have to like this part of the job or you're not going to last very long. And I don't like this part of the job is that you, uh, someone comes in to you and they're like, so I have this idea that I've always had. And you know, I want, you know, like some mountains with like a giant eye and then like, uh, my daughter and then like, you know, and that's, you know, people have these crazy ideas of what they want tattooed and they don't have any idea how to, you know, and you, as an artist, you have to like try and figure that out and make it work close to them. And, but this gives really the, them the opportunity, you know, like with kind of rudimentary, if they just understand a little bit of art history or composition or whatever to go be like, you know, put in a series of words and it'll pop something out. And yeah. so like, that's what it's giving anyone who can string some words together. Uh, it's giving them an opportunity to think creatively and watch something get realized that they put out, you know, in real time, because it's happening in like seconds, you know, yeah. like, uh, you know, so that's, that's really exciting. And I think that there's a, there's a creative problem on, I, I hate light, right and left and that whatever, but um because they don't mean anything anymore but the the not the the, the not the empire of nothing right the the not empire of nothing whatever that is um the the, the sex is, pollution conscious part yeah 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 they, they, yeah the, the rest of the the people who are not like oh okay the, who are not you know into the the current thing uh or whatever the people who are still like semi-conscious and critical um those people have a creative problem uh, in terms of like, there's not a lot of art. You know, they always say that like the left can't meme and then like the right can't make art. It's, it's a, it's a real thing. And they used to be able to, I mean, like the, like obviously most of the art that's ever happened came from like, you know, the palaces of kings and nobility, <laughs> you know, like that, that, that created patrons that did like, and the, no, they hired people to make all the art. Um, and so, you know, this idea that, you know, art is only coming from like, you know, communists on drugs is, is like a very new, you know, thing. So I think that, but right, you know, those take, it takes a long time to develop the skills to make art and that has to be a vocation and you have to want to do it and you have to be talented at it. And there's a lot of people, not a lot of people who, you know, are there yet. Uh, and, uh, I want to try and get there. I actually want to start to, you know, I'm, I'm doing the AI for fun, um, and for experimentation and to, to play with things, but I, I actually want to get my artistic chops back and, uh, you know, do some, actually create some paintings and so forth. But for people who aren't going to do that, I mean, you, like we're in a telegram chat together and 
uh, you know, a lot of us are talking about the same ideas and all these guys. And some of these guys are just like, you know, I play guitar, you know, and some of uh, those works are amazing. That these guys yeah. have been churning out. Yeah. That, so it's there. It's giving them the power to make art just from words. And even if they can't draw, right. you know, like, and so that's, you know, what they're coming up with. It's like, this is what I would make if I were an artist, you know, without having any of the skill or the background. So that's, well, uh, it, you know, it's it, even more than that. It's what they, yeah. it's what they did make. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? no, yeah, exactly. It, it's they, 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 they put it out there and it, it was created. And so yeah. that's really exciting. Cause it, it gives maybe bridges that gap that, you know, uh, that's there right now. And that talent gap uh, a little bit. And it's like, okay, oh, hey, well we can, we can throw together some great ideas. Um, here's what my dream of the future would look like, right. you know, without hiring a renderer and stuff like that. I mean, I know personally, just because I'm me, I I've tried to hire people and not been very successful, even when I had money, <laughs> like here's yeah. some, money. Would someone please take my money to do this job. And I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't get a lot of artists to work with me because uh, I'm on the wrong side of the fence. Right. And so like you get a lot of people, you know, if you get these guys, you know, just like, here's what I think is really exciting and they get to make it into art. I mean, that's, that's very, you know, exciting. And whether or not you're going to call these things that were created in one minute by a computer, uh, whether or not we're going to say, Hey, this is worth like thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, I that, mean, there's a little bit of a supply and demand thing going on there. Yeah, where if the supply gets to a certain point, that, that, there, there isn't enough money to pay, you know, five hundred dollars for something that was generated in a minute by like you know thirty words put together. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, right now there's a little bit of a confusion about what it, what it is and what people can do with it. Uh, I mean, I was doing stuff before you guys got access to it, or, or and, yeah. uh, and uh, you're like, holy shit. And then you're doing it like yourselves. I'm like, it, it wasn't really that hard. Uh, <laughs> you know, so right. I think once people realize how easy it is, it won't be. But, you know, there, there are guys who I was following, which is why I started getting into it, who are professional illustrators and concept artists and stuff like that. And they're selling them NFTs of this stuff, like right off the bat, like boom, and, and making some cash off of it. Some good business sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it's, it's, it's like. You can be like, this is a terrible idea for humanity. And the answer is that's correct. Uh, but uh, you know, like in the, in the short term, I mean, like you can, you can be against it and, and just not see what it is or be able to react to it or use it or talk about it intelligently, or you can just see what it is and see what you can do with it or not. I mean, I, I sent, uh, I have a friend who's a designer in Los Angeles who works for some really, uh, you know, high end restaurants and firms and stuff like that. And he, and I, I sent him, an invite to it. I was like, do you know about this thing? Cause he went to school to be an architect. I mean, he's super right. into like, he's super visually literate. And, and, uh, and I'm like, look at this thing, what we can do. And he's like, Oh, I will definitely mess with that. You know, <laughs> he's going to oh. be the first one in his office. Who's like, Oh, well we can just conceptualize this with AI real quick. It's, <laughs> it's very addictive too. Oh yeah. Uh, you can see, you just spend days just doing nothing, but putting new words together and show, hitting, uh, hitting, you know, create and i wasn't even on mid journey there i was just on the the cheap dream by wombo app yeah um, and you can still have fun i was showing people at my family reunion they're like ai art is that like uh you know uh art about ai and i was like no just give me a sentence and they're like uh you know uh sad people in a bar type 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 bam they're like that's really <laughs> really close and and <laughs> do another one a yeah. pirate ship in the sky, bam! You know, you the schooner up in the clouds, and they're like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> yeah, it just it throws together so quick. But the, the, there's something uncanny about the speed there, and um, it, it the the thing that was going through my mind the first couple of weeks I I saw this was, is this even really art? Mm -hmm. Because art is a, you know, you think of it as a, as a creative act, you know, a, a, a beautiful mountain range, unless you're a creationist is not art. It's a, it's beautiful, but it's not art. A painting done right. by a human hand of that mountain range would be art. And so here we have this thing that people have put together this device, which is, which is intended to perform this function. And it turns out in, in a, in a sort of mathematical if X, then Y kind of uh, like algorithmic fashion, these images where 
you know, the, the sum of the human creative element there is just throwing words together. You might not even have a vision in your head in the like praxis kind of way that you're right. trying to create. You might be trying to generate that image in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so my first thought was like, maybe this isn't even art. Maybe these are just algorithmically generated images, but in reading perhaps the supreme artist of the 20th century, James Joyce, he described art, not even as a creative act necessarily, but as a, as a kind of disposition. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, if people are fiddling around trying to create the right kind of image, there's something, you know, it's not conventionally artistic in the way that one might go to school and learn how to use a brush or, uh, you know, charcoal or, or paints or whatever, but there's something artistic in the inclination there. And I was curious if you had any thoughts on, on whether this is or is not even art properly understood. Well, I mean, that's like, when I, we, I think we've talked about this for a certain extent there, there's, I mean, that's a great question of the 20th century, you know, like, you know, it started with like Mar Marcel Duchamp and like, you know, like signs his name on a urinal and that, and went and put it in a gallery and it's probably worth you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars right now. Cause I know about it. It's a big deal. <laughs> and, uh, and so like that's been happening in the art world for a really long time. I mean, I did that uh, video about uh, a guy who, uh, uh, you know, used, you know, construction equipment to dig a, a, a hole in the side of a Mesa, you know, and that's all it is. It's a, it's a, this big like parallel hole that matches up with a, a hole on the other side of the Mesa mm -hmm. across the Valley or whatever. Uh, and, and Michael Heisner's double negative. And, uh, I mean, that's art. I mean, that, that, that's, you know, obviously been galleried and like, you know, like it, it, it's established in the seventies as art. And, uh, you know, the, this woman who made, you know, concrete uh, tubes and put them out in the desert and, and uh, in Utah and uh, that spiral jetty by Robert Smithson. That's just, again, construction equipment taking in uh, rocks and making a big spiral in the middle yeah. of the salt, great salt lake. And it's like, I, I know of some boomers who would say, Oh, that's not real art. But then you show them pictures of like Andy Goldsworthy's art, you know, his little, you know, beach pebble works, or you, you arrange the, the dead leaves in a particular way and it forms this beautiful pattern. And you see that on a coffee table book and you're yeah. like, well, yeah, that that's obviously art. And then you just, okay, well just make that a uh, 2000% larger and <laughs> yeah and it's the same thing um, yeah 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 and it's it's just all you know concept i think a huge part of it is um agency i think you know is a huge part of the art right it, which is what makes the um the ai thing such uh, feel like such a gray area um well i mean like at first i was like yeah when i first started doing it uh, i'm like who would ask for what I asked for, but me, <laughs> you know, I basic people are going to make basic art, you know, like uh, someone's, you, you can see it. If you're watching the mid dirty feed, you know, the, you know, there's people who are like, you know, who was someone had said, uh, I, I think Kyle was like, uh, like, like cat with a shopping cart, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, basic people are going to make basic art, you know, like uh, there's yeah. tons of people like, just like Spider-Man, you know, like, and, and, and um, you know, I'm in there like uh, Maxfield Parish crowds, uh, clouds with a with uh, monks with <laughs> orange robes, and da da da, and a, and a, and a wireframe thing because that symbolizes the the concept of creating order from bait for me. So like, what I'm making has enough agency in it to, right. that it is unique to me to a certain extent. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it almost feels like it dovetails with what, what not to make it all about the, the guy I've been exploring for a week, but like yeah. the, the, this idea that art in the past seemed to be negotiated with the broader culture and for the pure minded artist, like art for art's sake is the only kind of like real art. And of course there's no, there's no audience for that. It's hard to make a living doing that, spending all your time writing a novel or painting this masterpiece that only you can appreciate. Um, but to the artist, you know, art for yourself and for your own edification seems to have been the idea. And now we suddenly have the tools for people to do that for themselves. Right. And what they didn't before. And it's, it's what it's done is it's, it looks as if it is potentially 
some kind of threat to the professional art class, to the skilled artisan who has mastered particular techniques, but has not done anything to the artistic inclination, mm-hmm. um, especially in that more pure of heart, art for art's sake, art for my own self-expression kind of manner in, a, in an odd way. Yeah, I mean, and, and that art for my own sake, uh, you know, kind of dovetails with your science uh, article that you wrote, uh, science for, because because I need to figure out how, how bee stings hurt, uh, you know, but, uh, but, you know, I mean, the art for art's sake, I mean, that is kind of like a very 20th century idea, you know, like, or, or maybe, maybe a little before that, but not much. Uh, that's kind of 20th century navel gazing kind of stuff compared to like, well, what did people make art for? Well, you know, all the amazing pottery in ancient Greece was made to be used. Yeah. It was to, you know? and, and to express something to, to other people besides yourself, perhaps. Yeah. And so, you know, say something, you know, put it, you know, like you're adding something it, it, much more in the way we were talking about earlier, like here's an ancient myth and I'm going to make this cool representation of it. And right. that's a lot of what was being done. I mean, that even if you look at the Renaissance, like here, here are scenes from the Bible on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. And, uh, you know, but that's, we're doing something that everybody can understand because we all have a connection to that. Right. And we're going to try and render that. Um, and so, Leah, yeah, that, that's really what art was, I think, for most of human history. The, the pure art is like, I, I'm, I'm a tortured soul and I must make my, my, my creative art. I mean, that, that's, very, that's, you know, like that's very new. Uh, and I mean, and I'm that way. I'm the one. I actually had this discussion with John Lavelle at dinner one time because he was talking about something like that. And I was like, oh, I could never work with you, work, work for you because I'm like, I'm like being told what art to make. Right. Uh, I, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm the 20th century version of that for sure. Uh, but I think that's because I'm a visionary thinker and I, I have a specific thing that I'm trying to put out right. there. Well, and he probably is too, but, but the artist who has their own idea of what they want to create doesn't want to be a mere paintbrush for someone else probably. Right, right, right. But you know, like most artists in history, that's what they really were. You know, right. <laughs> like that. That's that is what art has been. I've heard arguments that architecture was the first sort of formal form of art. And uh, good luck building a house by yourself. You, know, you need yep. you need more people, let alone a cathedral or a pyramid. Yeah, art, architecture is like this weird uh, confluence of le- legal stuff and business and like environment and especially now i actually right uh, people wouldn't know but i i i, I was uh, an admin at a, at a worldwide architecture firm uh for a few years when i lived in san francisco mm. and uh so i worked under the like design i worked i was i was basically the secretary for like the design architects like the design architects and the, and the project managing architects which are totally different kind of personalities oh yeah <laughs> you know, the, the design architect design, is, is, or from, RC. from italy and is like it needs to look like this blah, 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 blah. you know and uh, it would be amazing and then they leave and then these guys have to figure out how to fucking do that yeah the project <laughs> manager has to figure out how to put you know a light switch on top of a pocket door that yeah. runs this it was like the the actual details of the thing are not really a on the mind of the designers or so my experience has been with construction Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's the same thing. My dad always used to because my dad was a you know electrical estimator, and he uh, he, he he you know he would have to sit through those meetings. And he, his, his favorite phrase for years was tertiary rhythm. <laughs> like you can't put lights up there because it'll mess up the tertiary rhythm. <laughs> and, and he was like, "What the fuck does that even mean?" <laughs> like I, my dad worked on the railroad, uh, but. Uh, I'll but you know, there's a language, and I, I I speak that to a certain extent, and I understand it. Uh, you know, so I, you know, when you're trying to create something, that's what you do. But but as far as like the agency, we're talking about what what art is and and whatever. Um, you know, it's definitely, I think there's that there's that agency and the the idea to take. You know, when I talked about the Lord of the Earth in uh, Fire in the Dark, um, there's actually camp i think it was camp was the word that uh might i think it was that has an etymology that goes back to like to bend um and you can imagine that kind of you're making a camp and you have to like bend stuff and put it together like you're taking Mm -hmm. picture it just kind of inspired me i'd have to check myself to make sure that's right but um we were talking about this um 
there's it felt like there were a few words that all sort of converge on that concept because DK has the same meaning. Greg Nosh yeah. has this whole tangent about how DK referred to justice and was literally used in reference by the old Greeks in pruning certain plants. And they would they would literally okay. the, the the literal translation was like uh you would you would prune back unjust plants that had gotten too wild and out of control. They, they were using the same kind of slightly legal connotive language to imply unruly plants that needed to be straightened. And DK literally means meant straight or straightforward, particularly in speech. But it's it's one of the the roots of the conceptual roots of justice that we see in in Homer and also in um, many of the other Greek playwrights in, in the later classical era. Um, I, but I remember you mentioning that the the to bend with a completely different word. And it seemed like a, a lot of, a lot of words sort yeah, of converged. It, it, it was, you know, the word for King, you know, and then it's related to the word. Uh, I don't think it actually is related to the word, right. But uh, it is, it is basically Rex comes to making straight lines, basically. Like it goes back to, back to etymology, etymologically back to things that make making straight lines. And you take something and you're making it straight, something that's disordered and you're putting a straight line. That's what King does. Uh, that's what that's what lawmakers do, you know. Like this is the this is now the order. This is it's going in that direction. Um, I mean, what I was referring to was a different, a different, a, a, yet another word, but very similar uh, in terms of you know what the what I associate with the Lord of Earth is like. What we do is we take our natural world and you know we shape it. You know, similar to the pruning. The pruning is more like this has to be this way, sir. Uh, but the the uh, may, you know, we make it we we shape it in a way that uh, it, and sometimes just is just beautiful to us. You know, it's not even like the correct way or whatever. It's not like you know, like this is That's how some you, Palladian architecture where everything. Yeah, yeah, it's right more like a bon tree. Like I'm just going to make this tree. I'm just going to you know cripple this tree and uh, make this tiny little fucked up tree because I think it's pretty that way, you know? <laughs> and, uh, Bonsai is a funny example too, because yeah. there are, there is like, I forget the number of different styles there, but the, the classical isosceles triangle style actually does have ratios that they aspire to. At least the, the Japanese did that. The Chinese had a little bit more of an organic feel for it, but uh, they, they did, they eventually converged on a sort of Palladian ratio set for what the ideal bonsai tree is supposed to, to look like. Amazing. Yeah. yeah that, and, and so, yeah, there's, it, you're taking nature and you're shaping it. And that's really what, if you really want to think about what art is to a certain extent, like you said, as you said, a mountain range is not art. Mm -hmm. uh, it just is. Uh, right. you know, it's but, but the but the bonsai tree that is carefully cultivated and pruned to yeah. emulate and to represent those tough old mountain trees that the literati who are fleeing from the court for some peace of mind found and admired yeah. becomes art because they it's it's a byproduct of human agency and not just a, a transplant from the mountains yeah yeah exactly they've they've changed they've they've taken the world and, and said this decided what is beautiful Mm -hmm. you know they, 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 they i've decided that this is beautiful therefore it's art uh, and so that 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 takes a lot of the in, in, in adds to the question i think to a certain extent yeah like uh i have decided that this is beautiful that uh, well, you know, this is my taste and a lot of a lot of living artistically because you mentioned that uh you know in terms of uh mishima was cer certainly someone uh, i love the idea of life as art um you know living artistically and i try to do that myself um but you know the people who we admire who live artistically um really they're they're taste makers right and they 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 are really good at curating uh so like you know what is the perfect yeah it's kind of the opposite of the fight club like sentence like like what kind of you know like uh uh, dishes, you know, does you know, embody me as a person or whatever. Right. Uh, it, but like, that's really what tastemakers do is they're like, what is the perfect, what fork would I use? Yeah. <laughs> and and what, what label am most I going to? And the most, it fits my aesthetic. And I'm actually really good at that kind of stuff. Like I said, I'm, I'm mad. I really wanted for this set. Um, there's a Noguchi horn shaped lamp. Uh, 
that he made in the in the sixties that that you can still buy from the New York Museum, and it's twenty five hundred dollars for a paper lamp. And I I I'm like, I, there's no way in the world that I can justify that. But that is the correct lamp for my aesthetic to be behind me right now. One day. <laughs> so, so, one day. Well, you can I, you a can brown leather one. chair, which I'm looking into. But uh, you could you could make one though. You, you all you need is the right LED strip, and you need a, a couple dozen or hundred hours practice with origami right yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go yeah 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 so that yeah. i can so i can rip off the noguchi's lamp and then well, like, you, you make it your a own crappy noguchi like... lamp like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then that would probably say something about me as a person as well that i wouldn't want to say so <laughs> only if you sell it yeah yeah exactly only if you mass produce it and sell it exactly I, I was trying to figure out like well how could i make my own version of that and then that be there's that that art thing again, like well, here's something that exists pri- privately. Can I make something that was inspired by that that is my own? Yeah, uh, you know, like well, if I if I had that molded out of plastic, uh, out of translucent orange plastic, I, I just thought of that right now. Um, you know, like with a flickering light inside, also awesome. Uh, you know, so there, there's things to be done. Now, shit, now yeah. new cool lamps. Uh, <laughs> I have this personality, so that's a, yeah. that's. A, I'm like, oh, translucent plastic, uh, like bull horns. That would you be sick. Probably pick some of that up at like Walmart or, or freaking any <laughs> yeah. or a craft store of some sort, yeah. and you fiddle around with prototypes, and then have someone three D print the right kind of plastic to get the shape and all that. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy, and and um, and on the one hand, you can think of art as this very very selective thing. And I guess in another frame, sort of paralleling how people could talk about religion is either everything is religion or nothing. You say that everything is that you do is art. Just some people are really shitty at it. Um, I uh, I was my so I every once in a while I'll I'll smoke a pipe and I have this I had this pipe that broke and I was like oh shoot now I got to go make a new one because um, I don't want to buy one. Uh, and I was at work and I found a piece of two by four not the not the not the uh, pressure treated stuff, but the, you know, the standard kiln dried stuff. And so I started, you know, drilled the right holes in it and started carving it and it fits now. And I tested it out and it works. And my wife saw it and she's like, well, it's pretty unusual looking, but it's, it's on brand. And I, I wasn't, it almost felt like an insult. Like uh, maybe I need to up my game on, on, on the, <laughs> the pipe, uh, the pipe bowl manufacturer here, man, I need to go, stop being lazy, get an actual corn cob and, and do it properly. <laughs> yeah. Two by four is maybe not cutting it. Instead of like the, the soda can bong or whatever for tobacco. Yeah. That, that, that's if you want to be an, an intentionally ironic hipster bro shitty artist, which mm-hmm. I guess is also an option. And perhaps right, right. many people go through their life unconsciously as shitty artists if our lives are art. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's what I, I was joking. Uh, you know, we were talking about AI and, uh, you know, because anyone can look at uh, in this particular one that I'm in, I'm like, your prompts are right there. Everybody's seeing what you're using. Hmm. I was trying to make these really cool psychedelic poster, like godlike uh, images. Uh, and I was trying to get the right, you know, but the, it fucks up the faces. So I was messing with it. And, and but the look was like right on on target to what I was looking for. Um, you know, like, you know, cause my whole project is really like, well, what would these myths, you know, mythic ideas that were, I wrote about in fire in the dark, well, what would they look like? You know, can you, can you, can I flesh this out? And that's my big project. But, um, you know, some jokers, you know, at about like, you know, 11 o'clock at night popped in and like took all my prompts and made like psychedelic, awesome Danny DeVito's and like Steve Buscemi. And like, and I'm like, <laughs> You suck. <laughs> it just ruined, it kind of ruined it for me for the night. I was like, I mean, I guess that's funny in your world. I guess you're having fun right now, but I'm like, yeah. you are basic and you suck. You, you took something beautiful and made it stupid. Uh, that's <laughs> that, that can't, you can't have nice things. I know? think I remember seeing a, a whole host of um, AI generated versions of Pepe the Frog and, yeah. and, and, and that. I've seen AI. Im- images of uh joe biden at, at a gun range um <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> just, yeah just all kinds of goofball shenanigans people almost almost mocking the medium because it's so easy in a way yeah yeah well and and in, in this you know this ai because it's open to everybody it has all kinds of like really basic like current thing 
ligers too. So, you know, you'll see like, like, like Adolf Hitler in a MAGA cap, like instead stupid stuff that you're like Portland hipster person's like, yeah, this is reality. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like that's, yeah. And so it, it's I'd like, again, it is, a, it is a mirror of humanity to a certain point. Although, there is a whole subgenre on social media of tracking the, the silliness that was depicted in the margins of, um, you know, medieval artwork as well. You know, like yeah. cats with trumpets and oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. people keep getting like all kinds of strange sexual acts. I believe there was a whole gargoyle on some church that was sculpted to be uh, like when the water came down the drains from the roof, it would be like shitting on the people below <laughs> with its ass sticking out <laughs> over the side because the stonemason didn't get paid. So he was like, fuck you. I'm going to leave a big permanent uh, middle finger to the, the whole project. And, you know, those took hours, you know, those took, those took with the gargoyle probably days. Oh and yeah. Who knows how much time people spent drawing, you know, you know, weird, you know, people blowing a cat like a trumpet or whatever it is they drew and i don't i don't know if it's better or worse that people are doing those at the click of a button rather than you know painstakingly etching out this gargoyle crapping water on the, on the <laughs> yeah. yeah it feels like art has you know since the dawn of time been a, a tool for for uh humor and mockery oh for sure for sure yeah, and, I mean. and just goofing off too uh, I, I think three or four years ago, yeah. archaeologists discovered the first Yo Mama joke. Um, it's a bit cryptic. Yeah. It's a bit odd, but it was on a, a Sumerian clay football from 6000 BC. And it's some riddle about, you know, what what is this large and so much? Is it your mother or something? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> some, some stuff never gets old, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you know, like we're 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 the first dick drawings, you know, like it's that's probably before language. Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. Uh guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. So it's like what is art? It's it, I feel like it's very easy for especially people with a kind of conservative leaning to get very black pilled. And, uh, and, and very like, oh, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Look at this newfangled thing that's destroying all the old things. And then you go back to the very oldest of the old things. You're like, not, I, I think we're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, think- there, there are bad things for sure. And there's, there's the question of like, well, the thing that you like from the past was done that way because that was the only option that they had, or that right. was the best option at the time. Like, you you know you could paint with egg tempera on the wall now but why would you do that uh, they, you know like that they, they you could hand mix lead based pigments uh and then you know like slow oh, insane through. slowly <laughs> you know uh but why would you do that um the same as oil, oil painting i mean oil painting obviously came about that was the best technology that they had uh, you know, like that, that over the years are like, oh, we figured this out. Do we, we figure, and th- these are the styles that we learned how to create with this to make it re- work really well on the processes and they worked it all out. But I mean, again, that's just a technology issue, you know, like right. that, like that's what they had in terms of technology. And there is something very magical about oil paint that I think, you know, I, I will probably still oil paint again in my life. Uh, there's something to that, but, um, but at the same time, like what I can do on my iPad and procreate um mimics that but i'm not like covered from head to toe in in turpentine (laughs) (laughs) you know like and and it doesn't take like three days to dry you know like yeah so i mean there's there's a lot that you can do at a higher speed so you can create more uh so that's you know it's just you know like people get a little attached to like well that's not art because it's not the thing that happened a long time ago well you know, the, the technology always changes for everything. Right. Yeah. Well, and um, I mean, on the, as a new technology and it, and it feels like a new medium entirely. Um, 
I'm, I'm sure you've heard Marshall McLuhan's famous phrase, you know, the medium is the message and the, 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 the genre or the medium naturally inclines itself in certain directions and, and, and has certain messages latent within itself. Do you feel like AI art is like the, like the, if, if that's true, I don't know if you, you subscribe to McLuhan or not, but if so, do you, do you think that the, that, that the message of the medium of AI art is discernible yet? Or do you think we still have to figure that out? Or do you not subscribe to that view? Yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, you know, like you, uh, as you've said, I mean, if, if, if sculpting is, is the, if the medium is the message, then is sculpting about, uh, you know, butts hanging off the side of the building or is it about the, uh, yeah, or is it about like, you know, the, what winged victory uh yeah. i mean it's right. it can be a lot of things uh so that i i don't know if that's you know I, I don't know if i subscribe to that or not although obviously there are certain you know, especially when you get into modern culture you have different things like you know like what television television what 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 inherently is part of that um, right you know but again it's like well you can have uh whatever like i love lucy or you can have yellowstone uh, you know, like there's a big, there's a big, you know, ideological, like, you know, you know, big, big scope mm-hmm. of things. And, and uh, with AI, it's like, obviously, probably the people who are most excited about it, who had a hand in creating it, um, I would guess, I'm not sure, but uh, I would guess that a lot of them have the, are with the current thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, like, they're more of the transhumanist bent i would i would imagine Mm -hmm. i'm sure uh they might also be you know there there is that kind of rebellion of web three or whatever um that you know like also aspires to like beat the system by like being like you know ungovernable you know so there's that's in there too so i don't know which to what extent like both those influences that because that you know that in democratizing uh, art in the way that we were talking about with uh, AI, that 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 creates one thing. But uh, you know, I, I'd also say with democratizing art again, I think it'll create more value in some ways for people who can create real art because that'll become more rare, and it'll be different. It'll be a right. Thing. Like Chuck Palinuk had this funny line in um, Adjustment Day, where uh, the, the the mastermind of the whole collapse in Civil War was advising his young protege to invest in in fake leather, because after the apocalypse, suddenly everyone's wearing real leather, and then the fake leather becomes this rarity that's no longer manufactured. And uh, you know, real art right now is the rule, and you know. AI art is kind of the novelty. Yeah. As soon as that shifts, the real artist, though they are competing against AI art visually, the you know I, I think the if you reject the death of the author in the in the plastic arts world, then the knowledge that this was created by a real person with their actual hands becomes in, intrinsic. Just the knowledge becomes intrinsically interesting and valuable. And so, yeah. Well, and one of the things about NFTs uh, has been that uh, that provenance matters. Uh, you know, like it, it's not enough. Yes, everybody can have this JPEG, but this is the JPEG, right? And in in the way that you can uh, track that, you can also track if a person made it or an AI made it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'll have its own value, I think, to a certain extent. And and also the there is a pushback. Um, we've talked about it a lot in the like kind of men's space. Um, there's a big, especially with, you know, like the, uh, whatever the great fake illness or whatever, uh, there, there was a, this period where people didn't get together. Right. And, uh, then everything was about zoom meetings, uh, like we're doing now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> everything about zoom meetings. And then, um, there became a real novelty of like, no, I actually want to get together with some guys in real life. Right. And so that people actually became really hungry for like, no, I want to do a real life thing. Like, I know we can Zoom meeting, but I want to go do a real life thing. Yeah. And uh, and that becomes its own market. So I think, I think, and also like, you know, like 
it will become scary as AI becomes easier and easier to control. So you, so, you know. so are you anticipating people spending more and more time around art of their own creation because they can might might generate some interest in yeah it's pretty cool to generate this but what if i actually tried my hand at you know we'll start with colored pencils and then we'll move to acrylics and and uh, what if i did try my hand i'll watch some youtube videos on technique and and just being surrounded by it and having the capability so, so being reminded of that ability you, you're seeing that possibly. kind of hunger generated possibly or it'll just or you know just you know or then you do that and you realize that it's fucking hard. And then, and then, uh, then, then you actually appreciate real art more. Right. Uh, like, or, or art that was made by, you know, human hands um, more because, you know, like there's so much, you know, these, these styles that we're like able to reproduce, like, oh, like, you know, professional il illustrators that do comic book covers and whatever, like uh, Craig Mullen, this is the really popular one that's one of the prompts for Mid, Mid Journey. And, uh, you know, like, this is someone who can gesture out like a, a conceptual drawing really fast because they've spent their entire lives life doing it. And right. their, their style is influential because they produce so much work. I think the Conan, the barbarian guy whose name escapes me at the moment, but, uh, Oh, Frazetta. Frazetta. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Frazetta and, and Vallejo and all, and all those guys. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's certain styles because those guys spent a lot of time perfecting that. And, and I think I see AI really, as a tool to help like what can i merge with it you know like what can i use that as a brainstorming thing uh and uh you know i can have it do that background for me and then repaint that but with the person that i put into it and the da -da -da -da, and like you know i do my own addition to it right. i can change it or i can have it make parts i've seen i've seen ai artists um you know they'll have it generate like five or six different images. Then they, 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 they combine them all together themselves with their own vision. And then that's like, you know, that's, that's where you get the, okay, now you're, now you're, you're doing enough work that, you know, it's, it's actually, you know, it's, it's actually your own thing. Right. Interesting. Well, uh, it's been getting close to about an hour here. I don't want to keep you too much longer, but did you have any, any final words to say on art or AI art or art with masculinity in particular? Um, I, I, uh, it's tangentially related to fire in the dark though. As I mentioned before, I think it, it comes out of um, a more complete beast very, mm -hmm. very nicely in, in that whole flow. And like you said, sort of dovetails all the way back to um, the way of men uh and but but with that uh, with that emphasis on art that has been uh you know, sort of sadly neglected and and it is cool to see get guys getting back into that um i <laughs> but i'm summarizing things again was there anything else you yeah. wanted to add yeah i mean that well that's i mean that's a that's a good point we can kind of bring up and then maybe uh, you know bounce off of is that you know there is a it's something I talked about in a recent speech, which, you know, people only saw if they tuned into it or, or bought it or whatever. Um, when I did that man on cage event and then I kind of wrote it up a little bit for that, you know, the, the sex pollution article in chest. Um, but I had a lot more to say about it. And it was just the sense that I think men lost their connection to art in the, you know, the 20th century and the early 21st century. Um, because art became, as I've often said, like art, art was against men. So men were against art, uh, you know, so it'd be kind of shifted in that direction where it was, it undermined the kind of values that a lot of men care about. Um, it was all about kind of, um, you know, subverting them. And so men lost a lot of connection to art, but, uh, you know, if you don't create, if, if we don't create art, then they create art for us. And when we get their art. Uh, and that's the only art we have. And so if, if masculine men don't create art, then um, we will only have people who hate masculinity to create art for us. Um, so that's the, that's the trade-off. So it's really important that men do take an interest in art because they, we have to remember that men made all of the art, basically. Men made almost all of the art in history, um, you know, with very specific examples that I'm sure a feminist historic historian would jump into, like, give, but they're like, you know, 0.5% kind of things. 
uh, men made most of the art in history. Uh, and uh, so the, it is our domain, uh, it, rightfully our domain, not like rightfully like we have a right to it, but like it, it is not something outside of the scope of masculinity. It's, it's not effeminate to be an artist. Yeah, which is where it's gotten that, you know, you always assume that a guy who is an artist is going to look at best like Johnny Depp. You know, like, or you know, like, it's good. just pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> I mean, well at, at I, best, I, I, I up as the, the Pirates of the Caribbean guy, right? But, <laughs> you know, he's going to be like on a swooshy and whatever. But uh, you know, I think that you know, men have to reconnect with art and really understand. And that's what's also been really interesting about AI is like just watching these guys who would probably say that they hate modern art. <laughs> you know, like watching them be like. They're basically creating abstractions with a vibe, which yeah. is, you know, a lot of the art that people say that they hate is like, um, and uh, the, the, the re- cheap stuff the creates very itself. suggestive works. Uh, there's, there's yeah. uh, at least with dream by Wombo, there isn't yeah. that, that definitive form that you get with mid journey, but you can get some very suggestive images. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was just, it, it's the fact that you can get, you know, like realize to see men who, like I said, probably have never thought about art exactly this way. I mean, I have, cause I, I spent a lot of time making it over the years, but to see men look at, you know, like colors going this way and, and composition moving this way and realize that that has a mood by itself without there being a person that you get, because the person's head's all fucked up and whatever, you know, like it, it's, but they're realizing that that had, they're like, this is kind of sick. You know, like this, this is this is kind of an awesome vibe that this has, and, and uh, right. to watch them kind of experience art in that way, in the way that I experience it, because I, I can walk, I, I I like Mark Rothko, and I I can actually walk into and Clifford Still, and like I can walk into a room of like abstractions that are thirty feet tall and be like, that's dope, <laughs> you know. But uh, a lot of guys just have not had that background and experience uh, to see it that way. You don't know what you're looking at. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And they've, you know, like, you know, it comes off a certain way to them, you know, like politically and ideologically, ideologically, and whatever. But to understand art in that way, be like, oh, that was kind of a cool project, you know, like I, that. That kind of came out anyway. It's, it, it's, and that's what really men need to be able to do is like reconnect with that and not just let it be someone else's realm because it's not. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's, it's because if you know we. If we don't determine, you know, we talked about what art is, it's like, well, like, uh, you know, saying this is what is beautiful. If we don't say what is beautiful, someone else will. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's what's great is, I mean, once you say, you know, m- art was turned against men, so men turned against art, that dynamic holds true no matter where art is directed against. If you yeah. look at the, the American Library Association's top 10 books, the people's choice, not the librarian's choice. Mm-hmm. Ayn Rand occupies four or five of those spots, including spots one and two. Um, the the which is you know Atlas shrugged in the Fountainhead. Um, yeah, the communists don't like that, so she's not on <laughs> any of their top lists. But uh, as far as public consumption is concerned, you know she she did a lot with the novel. You know, let alone what people like George Orwell did uh, relating right. to communism, but. Um, you know, art can be directed for or against all kinds of things, and and to see it as sort of the, as sort of the the, the terrain and a, a neutral thing, and a tool rather than something that is inherently you know good or inherently evil is I think a, a not just an opportunity, but but perhaps in a Miyamoto Musashi kind of way, a very masculine approach to looking at art, maybe absolutely. As well. So um, uh, it's been about an hour and I know you've got places to go. So I'll close with uh, plugging Jack's new book, Fire in the Dark, and uh, his, um, his weekly newsletters on his email list are fantastic. That's where a lot of good stuff comes out. So I'll try to throw a link in here on uh, the YouTube channel and on the on Spotify and wherever else this podcast goes, <laughs> I lost track. Is there anything else you want to say before we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, newsletters come out when they come out, so subscribe. And that's and uh, I try to, I try to mix in uh, really good content with you know the occasional plug because I do have to sell stuff and make a living. Of course, but, uh, the uh, you the know, like the artist. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's <laughs> you know, I, I gotta I gotta pay the rent. Uh, but uh, you know, also, you know, I'm on Twitter uh, now, which is ex- you know, like I I, w- I was against it for a long time, and I still kind of am. But uh, you know, now it's a tool uh, since uh, whatever uh, what's his face is going to buy it. Yeah, so Elon uh, Musk, yes, yeah, Elon Musk is going to buy it. So yeah. so uh, you know, I've been on it since then. So I'm I'm kind of trying to build that up, and that's going to be fun to to play with that and see what that is. And and uh, so a living people, master yeah, of the art of the tweet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's one of those things. Like I should have been good because I kind of write aphoristically anyway. Uh, yeah. So. I, it's something I should have been doing for a long time, but it was just uh, such a gross, like it was who was using it was the problem. <laughs> yeah. Just, just channel your inner, inner Nietzsche to condense yeah. two yeah. paragraphs into three words and you'll be good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Jack, thanks so much for coming on. It was absolutely a pleasure talking as always. And um, I'm sure this won't be the absolute last time we talk. So oh, take no. care. All right, man. Cool.